Hey, today on Ask a DM, we're going to be looking at whether player characters can convince NPCs to do anything if they roll a natural 20. Hey, Luke Hart here. So in my Ask a DM series, I answer questions from dungeon masters to help them run awesome games. So if you got a question, let me know down in the comments. Now this question came from Glenn over on Facebook, and what I'm going to do is just read it to you verbatim, because I think Glenn put this extremely well. Persuasion check. Here's a DM question. Playing in an Adventure League game, a player wanted to persuade an NPC to give him a healing potion. Player rolls a 20. I felt uncomfortable with it as another player, I just didn't think it's good for the game to walk around persuading people to give you healing potions, per se. The DM was put in a very precarious position. You don't just hand these things out, in my humble opinion. But the player continued to roleplay his character that way. I mean, where does it stop? Go to a supply store? Persuade them to give you their supplies for free? Instead of walking to the next caravan, persuade the drivers to walk while you drive. I mean, it's madness. And everyone has the opportunity to persuade. I know it's not in their character to do so, I guess they wouldn't, but even a bard can't or shouldn't just walk around doing persuasion checks on people to get something from them. How do you shy away from succumbing to this if you're a DM playing the NPC? Or am I completely off on this and you just go by the roll of the dice? Alright, this, this is actually an awesome question. The fact of the matter is that rolling a natural 20 is only a critical success on attack rolls. That is, saving throws, also use a d20, that is not a critical success when you roll a natural 20. Also for ability checks. Now ability checks could be initiative, an ability check could be a persuasion check, or a deception check, or an athletics check, or an acrobatics check. Rolling a 20 on the die is not a critical success. It does not mean you automatically succeed no matter what you're trying to do. Let's say that your player says, hmm, I want to jump to the moon. Now I'm exaggerating a little bit to make a point. And the DM says, let's see, jumping to the moon is an athletics check. Dun, 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 dun. There goes the roll. It's a natural 20. Does that mean your player just jumped to the moon because he rolled a natural 20? I don't think so. At least I hope not. What I want to do now is I want to take a look at the player handbook. I'm going to read a little section to you um, directly about attack rolls and critical successes. Page 194 of the player handbook. Sometimes fate blesses or curses a combatant, causing the novice to hit and the veteran to miss. If the d20 for an attack is a 20, the attack hits regardless of any modifiers or the target's AC. This is called a critical hit, which is explained later in this chapter. If the d20 for a roll is a 1, the attack misses regardless of any modifiers or the target's AC. Now here's the thing, the player handbook is specifically addressing attack rolls in combat. It does not mention saves, it does not mention ability checks at all, and anybody who, I mean, you're welcome to house rule this and say that if you roll a 20 on a, on a saving throw that it's automatic success, or, I mean, you're welcome to house rule it and say that if you roll a 20 on a persuasion check that it's an automatic success, but I'm strictly addressing the rules as written in the book, and nowhere in the player handbook or the Dungeon Master Guide or any reference that I'm aware of does it say that rolling a 20, a natural 20 on an attack on, on any roll is an automatic success. If you can actually cite me a page out of one of the the, the actual rule books that say that rolling a natural 20 is an automatic success on a ability check such as persuasion, hit me up in the comments and let me know what page that's actually on. Oh, by the way, I've been a Dungeon Master since high school and I make videos every week to help Dungeon Masters run awesome games. So if that interests you and you want to level up your D&D game, consider subscribing. All right, now let's just kind of think about this question a little bit more. You walk up to a shopkeeper and he shows you 10 potions and you're like, gee, um, you should just give these to me. And then the player tells the DM, I make some sort of convincing argument for it. And the DM's like, mm, okay, roll a, roll a d20, roll a persuasion check. And the player rolls a 20. Does that mean the shopkeeper would just give that PC, all those potions for free? I mean, let's think about this in real world situations. Let's say you walk into a store, let's say Walmart, okay? You walk into Walmart and you put a bunch of stuff in your cart and then you're, you're going out and you're at the checkout lane and you give the most convincing argument possible for why that cashier should give you everything for free. Let's say the cashier is moved by your story and calls her manager and her manager comes down and you give another convincing argument to 
get everything for free. I guarantee you, the manager is gonna look at you like you're crazy and say, no, I'm, I'm sorry, sir, you're gonna have to pay for all of that. I mean, that's how things work. You can't just, no matter how good of a persuasion check you roll, People aren't just gonna give things for free when it's not in their nature to do so. And that's the key part here. If if you're trying to do something that is just impossible, then the dungeon master doesn't even have to ask for a roll in that case. The dungeon master, I mean, in, in the example of my jumping to the moon thing, the dungeon master could just look at you and say, you know, I'm sorry, but it's quite impossible to jump to the moon. Okay, real quick, let me know down in the comments what you would do if one of your players tries to convince an NPC to do something that's absolutely implausible and happens to roll a natural 20. And if you're if you're trying to run a game that's realistic, that has some like, you know, some realistic elements and all that good stuff where you can actually believe in the world that you're in and it feels real and it's immersive and all that cool stuff, then just having NPCs be so weak-willed and weak-minded that a 20 on the die, there's a 5% chance that an NPC will give you anything you want. That doesn't contribute to a realistic game world in my opinion. So if in your game world, rolling a natural 20 on a persuasion check automatically results in success, then that principle is true not just for the player characters, not just for the players, but it's also true for all of the NPCs in the game. So I'm imagining a scenario here where NPCs, like scammers on the streets, are running this scam. So if I were a scammer operating under these rules that rolling a natural 20 automatically grants success, then I'm going to have a veritable army of street urchins, and I'm gonna have these street urchins, one by one, go up to the player characters and give them a sob story, trying to convince them that, oh, you sure, you should give me your sword. I I lost my arm when I was a lad, and I, I'm starving, I'm gaunt, and then roll a die, and it might not be a natural 20, and the player character says, no, I'm not giving you anything. And then I have street urchin after street urchin coming up to the player characters, one after another, convinced, trying to convince them to give them things, and I'm rolling dice every single time. And you know what? Odds are that some of them are gonna be 20s. And so the first natural 20, I take their, the, the fighter's sword away. The next one, I take the fighter's armor away. And then I take his backpack, and then I take his boots, and his shirt, and his pants. You can see where I'm going with this. NPCs operate by the same rules that the player characters operate by. And if rolling a natural 20, is an automatic success on persuasion, then my army of street urchins can take every last dime or, or gold piece or copper piece in this case from the player characters and from the players and they would have nothing left. So you see my point here, you see how ridiculous it sounds when we reverse it, right? If the players can do something, then the same thing also applies for the dungeon master and the NPCs and we reverse things and we think about how this would play out if I had an army of street urchins trying to persuade the player characters to give them everything, how absolutely insane and silly it sounds, right? I, I mean, I hope that sounds insane. I think one of the points I'm trying to make here is that we need to get off our knees in front of the altar of the Dice Lord and use some common sense from time to time. If it's not realistic that something would happen in our world, then there's a good chance that it's not realistic for it to happen in this fantasy world. Now, it's a fantasy world. It's not our world. There is magic and stuff like that, so I get that. But there's also real principles at work. People are real people, and you should portray, in my opinion, you should portray them as such. They shouldn't just be, like I said, slobbering idiots that a natural 20, yes, sir, I will give you everything I own. I don't think that will make for an immersive, believable game. All right, this is what I want you to do. If you think that rolling a natural 20 should not be an automatic success for any old type of persuasion, I want you to hit that thumbs up button down below. However, if you think that I'm totally wrong and rolling a natural 20, no matter what it is, should always be a success, then I want you to hit that thumbs down button up above or down below or wherever it happens to be. And let's try to get a little gauge here of what people think. This sort of thing sets precedence in your game as well. If a natural 20 is always a success no matter what you're doing and you set a precedent of that, the players will take that precedent and they will make decisions based upon that and they will and they will they will have expectations right any natural 20 is automatically a success and i don't know that that is a reasonable expectation to set for your players so just bear in mind that when you make a ruling and you do things like that um if you if you are making a one-off ruling and you're saying you know what guys ordinarily 
this would not be a success because this is just absolutely insane. However, this story that we're creating, this situation is so awesome. And this, I'm dying here laughing. I love this. This, this was such a great idea. And you rolled, it was a great idea, completely implausible, but you rolled a 20. I'm going to give it to you. I would make it very clear to your players that you are making a one-off exception to the standard rule just so they're aware that you're not setting a precedent for future time. Precedents are powerful and players will have expectations for you to follow them unless you're clear with them otherwise. Okay, another little quick point here. It is okay to say no. I usually don't, a lot of times I don't say no outright. What I'll do is I'll turn it back on the player a little bit. I'll ask them if the player wants to do something that I think my initial reaction is, this is totally impossible. What I'll do is I'll turn that back on the player a little bit and I'll ask the player, explain to me how your character would do that, right? So if you want to jump to the moon, explain to me how you would actually do that. Now in that situation, I don't know what he would say, but let's say that the player wants to somehow block a door off or something. And you're like, I don't really understand how you would possibly do that. There's no furniture in the room. There's none of this, that, or the other. And the player, and then you ask the player, right, how would you do that? How would you like block that door off? And the player comes back and says, well, you know what I want to do? I want to go to the hinges and I want to kind of tinker with the hinges and try to break the hinge mechanism. And then I want to go to the doorknob and I want to see if I can somehow, you know, tinker around with that a little bit to kind of jam the doorknob. And so that will kind of like, you know, block this door a little bit doing all that stuff. And that explanation from the player might just be enough for you to be like, oh, oh, well, I didn't think of that. You know, the DM didn't think of that. So I, that probably is possible to do that. All right, go ahead and give me a thieves tools check or something like that. And so turning it back on the players and asking that when you think something is impossible, turn it back on them. Ask them, okay, explain to me how you would do that. A lot of times you're going to be surprised. A lot of times your players are going to have a way to accomplish it, and they'll explain it to you, and you'll be like, oh, okay, make a, make a roll for that. Other times, they'll they'll realize that, oh, this kind of is a, a really impossible task. I have no idea how I would possibly do that, and that kind of settles the issue there without you having to outright say no to them. But again, back to my point, it's okay to say no. Oh, real quick, I want to remind you guys that I my giveaway for Morning Canyon's Tomb of Foes is still open. So if you want to get in on that, you can click that link down in the description or in the pinned comment. But there are different ways you can get like entries in it, and the more entries you have, the greater your chances of winning. So if you guys are interested in that, that is still open as of this video right now. So feel free to sign up for that bad boy. Remember, I make videos every week to help dungeon masters run awesome games. So if you want to level up your D&D game, consider subscribing. As always, if you have any questions about dungeon mastering or have a problem in your game, please hit me up down in the comments below. I am always happy to help out a fellow DM. And until next time, let's play D&D.